Good morning everybody. It is Thursday morning. Uh, thank you for joining with us as we come to read the Bible together. Today we're going to read Acts chapter 5. So let's hear God's word as we read it together. But there was a certain man named Ananias who, with his wife Sapphira, sold some property. They brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. Peter then said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit and you've kept some of the money for yourselves. The property was yours to sell or not sell as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You aren't lying to us, but to God. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell down on the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. Then some young men got up wrapped him in a sheet and took him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, is this the price that you and your husband received for the land? Yes, she replied, that is the price. Then Peter said, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are outside the door and they will carry you out too. Instantly, she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and she was buried um, up beside her husband. Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. The apostles were, prefer were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the people were meeting regularly in the temple area uh, known as Solomon's Colonnade. But no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out of the streets on beds and mats, so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and all were healed. The high priest and his officials, who were Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail and brought them out. Then he told them, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple as they were told and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council, the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail for trial. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they reported to the council, so they returned to the council and reported. The jail was securely locked, with the guards standing outside, but when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priests heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. Then they brought the apostles before the high council, where the high priest confronted them. Didn't we tell you never again to teach in this man's name, he demanded? Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teachings about him, and you want to make us responsible for his death. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God put him in a place of honour at the right hand as prince and saviour. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit who is given by God to those who obey him. When they heard this, the high council were furious and decided to kill them. But one member, a Pharisee named Gamal, who was an expert in religious law and respected by all the people, stood up and ordered that the men be sent outside the ch council chamber for a while. Then he said to his colleagues, Men of Israel, take care with what you're planning to do to these men. Some time ago there was a fellow Thaddeus, who pretended to be someone great, about 400 others joined him, but he was killed, and all his followers went their various ways. The whole movement came to nothing. 
After him, at the time of the census, there was Judas of Galilee. He got people to follow him. But he was killed too and his followers were scattered. So my advice is, leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. The others accepted his advice. They called in the apostles and had them flogged. And then they ordered them never again to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the high council, rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they continued to teach and preach this message. Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. And the end of Acts chapter 5. It's a very varied passage, starting with um, shocking deaths of Ananias and Sapphira because they lied. It's not because they kept something back for themselves, but it was because they simply lied. They tried to pretend that the money that they gave in was all the money they received. There was nothing wrong with holding back some money if they'd just been honest about it. But they wanted to deceive. They wanted to look better in front of other people. Um, they made it about themselves instead of about God and paid the ultimate price. But right at the very end, again another strange way of looking at it, as the apostles counted themselves worthy enough to be flogged, worthy enough to have trouble brought upon them for obeying God. I think most of us would have the opposite reaction. We would want to run away from trouble. We would want to um, hide from it, whereas they actively sought it. Because then they knew that they were doing something right. They knew that they were obeying God and teaching who Jesus was. But that last line, Jesus is the Messiah. A simple but wonderful truth. That's what they were talking about. That's what they were preaching. That's what they were telling the other people. That's what we tell people still today. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus can be our Lord. Let's pray. Father, again, thank you for this day. Thank you that you are with us now and always. Thank you that you have brought us safely through the night. Um, and for this day that we now face, Lord, thank you. You're ready for all your provision. We ask that you be with us and you would help us. Lord, for those who are starting to make decisions at this time, we pray that you would give them wisdom. For those who are in power in government and they're looking for the way out of this lockdown, the way that businesses should restart, the way that our lives should start to return to, what will be normal? Uh, Lord, just give them that wisdom, that insight that they need uh, and help us to respect, help us to support, help us all not to be foolish. Lord, thank you again for all your goodness. Thank you that Jesus is the Messiah. We ask that you be with us this day and always in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, folks, for joining with me. Uh, good to, to be able to do this in the morning, just to be able to start off the day by reading the Bible and by praying together. Uh, again, if you were to look outside, it's, a, it's, a, it's another glorious day. Yes, there's been rain overnight. We need the rain. The garden certainly needs it to save you from going out with the sprinkler, maybe. Uh, but again, it's God's provision to us. He is a great and a wonderful God. He always provides for us. So let's live this day knowing that God is with us through all the ups and the downs that maybe we will face this day. Take care, folks. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.